All right, so with this question, you're starting with, um, oh, good. Here you go. You're going to start with that 0 0.345, right, grams of copper, and then words are going to come down to the right, okay? And what did you guys have to change into next? Moles. The moles, okay? And when you have mole with a gram, what is that? molar mass, so you should have 63.55? Yes? 546, alright, so. Okay, alright, good. Okay, and then words came down to the right over here, and what are we changing into, or what are we relating to? HNO3, nice. So your nitric acid. Okay, and then... You bring that down to the right. And what are we actually asked to figure out? What are they asking for? Yeah, how much, how much nitric acid? And we don't measure nitric acid on a little balance with grams, right? We measure it with liters or milliliters. So we're going to put liters of HNO3. All right, so we already know how to do this part, which is our mole ratio. So you have a one to four ratio here. But this right here, this is the little hint yesterday. This is what I meant by don't use the big M. Use moles per liter because now you can actually do something with it in these kinds of calculations. So that 16 goes right here per one liter up here. Okay, how many of you guys got that? Not that far? Not yet. Okay, you were starting to get there. Your brain was starting to work towards it. All right, that's cool. That's good. This is actually one of your pre-lab questions, so keep, keep this in mind, okay? Because you're basically, for this lab, you're going to go forward, and you're going to come backwards on the post-lab questions, okay? So it's kind of the same relationship here. All right, so once you guys got that, you got 0 0.00136-ish? Yes. yes? Okay, thank you. And then, uh, so what is that in milliliters, because we don't usually bring a whole liter graduated cylinder over. Nope. There we go. So, so milli tells us a thousand and one. So move it three to the right. You got 1.36 milliliters, which is reasonable. Okay. All right. Cool. So I'll make sure you guys have your little notes on that. Go ahead and get your note packet out. We're going to turn to Solubility rules. Yay, our favorite. <laughs> Whatever. All right, the N stands for what? There, so you guys should all answer them right then. <laughs> all right, so nitrates. The A is... Acetates. And then G, we're going to, we'll say group one. S, sulfates. A, ammonium. And then G, group 17. Good. All right. So um, please remember... It's funny that people don't think of this, but when you see group 1 and group 17, please know that these are your metals, alkali metals, right? Sorry, I guess I should put alk metals. And these are your halogens. So if you see something that says, except with the halogens, like that's what they're talking about. It's all there. It's still in NAGZAC, all right? All right. Um, and then you had your two exceptions. I know you guys can see them, so... PB, which is who? Lead, HG, mercury, and silver. So this comes from P from the lead. And this guy, the M is mercury. And the S is for silver. All right, so your PMS rule um, basically says that if these guys are all soluble, your PMS rule tells you that they're soluble except when they're with one of these three. And that's going to be sulfates 
and halogens or group 17. Okay, so your PMS rule applies to those two in NAGSAC, okay? So once again, all those things, so all your sulfates are soluble unless they're with possibly PMS, all right? So lead sulfate or mercury and all that stuff, okay? All right, Castro Bear, I tried bolding the main ones, but C-A-S-R-B-A, -A, okay? I mean, we're finding a few with the magnesium, so just know there's, there's always little itty-bitty exceptions to, <laughs> to everything. Um, <clears throat> welcome to the world of chemistry. Uh, and so basically, just know there's going to be some things that are slightly soluble and slightly insoluble, and so th there's a whole spectrum, okay? So just don't be angry when you're like, but that's not on Nagzag, all right? So just, yeah, just be ready for them. All right, but Castro Bear applies to our sulfates. Meaning, once again, your sulfates are soluble unless they are with um, unless they are with uh, calcium, strontium, and barium. Okay. Yes. Hydroxide. Yes. And we're going to go back up to that in just a second. Yep. All right. So now that we have our NAGSAG, like I said, that was your summer assignment, knowing that one. Okay, so now we can kind of come up to here and we can look through and I'm just showing you that you already have most of these rules. So the rule number one up here says most alkali metal salts and ammonium salts are soluble. So that's taken care of in NAGSAG. Okay, all right. Um, chlorine, bromine, iodine are soluble except with mercury, silver, lead. So that is your group 17 except with PMS, right? So we've already taken care of that. Did you guys notice fluorine was missing from that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So the fluorines are also gonna be soluble except for with group two metal. So that is new, all right? So this is one worth highlighting or underlining or circling, okay? So once again, it's, it's included in the NAGSAG where it's the group 17 but now your group two metals are making it insoluble. Okay? Okay. So that means that the PMS rule doesn't apply to fluorine. Okay. All right. Number four says nitrates, chlorates, perchlorates, and who's CH3CO? Oh, good job. All right. Be ready for acetate to be written anyway. All right. So and acetates are soluble. So we've got all that except for these two. So I would highlight those two guys or underline. Okay. And then finally, your salt, your <laughs> sulfates, your sulfates are soluble except for Castro Bear and PMS. So we already got that. Number six says carbonates, phosphates, dichromates, chromates. Sulfides, hydroxides, and oxides are insoluble, but rule one takes priority. So you look back up. Rule one is talking about group one and ammonium. So this is a new one. I would highlight. Oops, that's not a highlighter. <laughs> it's like read through the line. All right. So highlight that and then go ahead and add in. Group one and NH4. All right. And so um, <clears throat> your group one and your ammoniums, those guys are going to now make those insoluble things soluble. So it's so like Ethan was saying, it's the Castro Bear reverse, basically. Okay? All right. Cool. Um all right. So now that we've gone over those, let's go ahead and go to number six over on the right-hand side. We're going to look at which ones are soluble, which ones are insoluble. I apologize ahead of time. I did not give you any room. So you either write super, super tiny or give yourself arrows and kind of stagger your answers. I, I apologize. I didn't. I did not give you guys room. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to zoom mine in, though. Sorry, you, don't got, you guys can't do that. 
<laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> so determine which ones are soluble and insoluble. So silver nitrate. Silver nitrate. Soluble. Why? Oh, actually, let's also practice writing these. Silver. What's nitrate? NO3. Good. All right. So silver nitrate, and we just got told soluble. Why? The nitrate did it. Okay? All right. Sodium chloride. NaCl. And this one is going to be? Soluble. I had someone one time say, because of life experience. I was like, okay. That's all right. But what, what is the reason why? Why is it? Group, yeah, it's a salt, but it's group what? 17. 17 and, with, and group 1. Yeah, good. So you had group 1 and a group 17. Okay? All right. Next one. Lead to bromide. What does that 2 tell me right there? The charge. Good. So that means that it was a PB2 plus, a bromine with a minus. We crisscross these, so we end up with a little 2 on the outside. Okay? So you have PB... Br2. All right, that one. Hmm? Insoluble. Why? PMS. Good. This is your PMS rule. All right. Um, ammonium hydroxide. Ammonium hydroxide. So which one is ammonium? NH4. And what is the charge on ammoniums? A plus one. And what is it on hydroxides? So do we have to put any subscripts? No. All right. Soluble or insoluble? Why? Right. Yeah, so it's our reverse Castro Bear thing. Or no, it's not. Sorry. It is a hydroxide with a with ammonium. Okay? All right. So one thing we're going to add to this is we're going to put um we're going to put Castro Bear as well with your hydroxide. Okay? Um Got it. Cool. Okay, so barium sulfate, barium sulfate, insoluble. insoluble. Good. Let's let's go ahead and write our formula too. Let me write in a different color. What is barium's charge? Uh, plus two. Plus two. What is sulfate's charge? Minus two. Minus two. So crisscross you. We don't have any extra subscripts. All right. So barium sulfate, and you guys said insoluble. Why? Right. Right. So that's your Castro bear. All right, calcium hydroxide. Calcium has a what charge? Plus two. Good. And hydroxide has a? Minus one. Minus one. So we're going to have a two on the outside. So calcium, and we'll put hydroxide in parentheses. We'll have two on the outside. All right, that one. All right, so this is, this is the reverse Castro Bear. So it is a hydroxide. Hydroxides are always insoluble unless they're with ammonium, group one, or a Castro Bear. So is it with a Castro Bear? Yes. So is it soluble? Yes. All right. All right, um, lithium carbonate. L I is a plus one. This is minus two, by the way. So L I two C O three. Good. All right. Soluble. Why? It's a group one with your carbonate. Okay. Good. 
Okay. All right. Are there any questions on these? You should have some to practice, I believe, on the homework. If not, it is due Saturday. Somebody who who was telling me the due date this morning? What is it? Saturday at eleven p.m. Yeah, I didn't even wake up that early. <laughs> huh? What because it makes it, because everybody gets confused about midnight, because they're like, is it 12 this day or that day? And then it, and then everybody turns it in at the wrong time. <laughs> True story. True story. <laughs> okay. okay, so let's go ahead and look down here. I want to get you guys to do this. Um, I'm going to reserve the last five minutes for uh, talking about your tests, okay? All right. I know, I know, it's like the subject of the day. All right, so um, for your guys' molecular, complete ionic, and net ionic, so you guys did a pogle over this. Who can tell me which one of those three is the longest one? Ionic. ionic. Which ionic? Complete. complete ionic. All right, so the thing to remember, this one will be your longest one, Okay. This will be your shortest one, for sure. Okay, you can write those if you want. I don't care. I just want you to be able to recognize it, all right? So the whole idea is that your molecular equation is like you learned the first time around, right? So this is what you learned in pre-AP. Okay, so it's normal, I guess you could say, all right? Do I need to write that too? I'll write that too. I see a couple people, I see a couple people like, what do I write? All right, so it's normal, okay? So what that means is you have compounds in here, so you'll have your molecules, um, but you will also have your states of matter. And we did have to review them this morning, so I will take a second to do that, okay? S stands for what? Solid. Solid. L. Liquid, do we use that for everybody who is in liquid form? No. no, who are our liquids limited to? Water and, yeah, see, that's why we do it. All right, so any um, melted solids, I guess you could say, or anything that is in liquid form, but it is a pure substance, okay? So pure substances. That's who it's actually limited to. So can that be a compound? Yeah. If it's a melted compound, absolutely. Can it be something that I put into water and stirred up? No. What do we use for that one? Aqueous. Good. Right, I'm going to change my color so you guys can see it. So AQ is usually used more than L. All right. And so that means in solution. And then finally, you have G, which is your gases. Okay? All right. So we're good with that? Okay, cool. Because um, I believe on your homework, that was, you got to do that. Okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> you have to have your states of matter and, um, oh, it needs to be balanced. So coefficients. Okay, so your coefficient, so the big numbers in front. All right, your complete ionic equation. All right, so this is the longest one. What do we do in the complete ionic one? Separate, Separate your ions, right? So things in solution. That's what I like to think of. Things in solution separate into ions. Now... Um, if it is an insoluble substance, is that going to separate into ions? No. If it's insoluble, is it going to dissolve? No. no. Okay. Um, so uh, just the things that are dissolving, just those things. Okay. And this one, you also have to have your states of matter. You have to have your charges. I'm trying to help you out on your test here. 
biggest missed thing last year was they didn't put their charges, so you don't get credit for it. You have to put your charges on your ions, only on the ions, okay? So if it's like a solid getting put into it, you don't, you don't do anything on that side. All right. Um, so charges and um, subscripts. become coefficients. What I mean by that is if I have something like calcium nitrate, right? NO3 with a little 2 on the outside. This will now become calcium 2 plus plus 2 NO3. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then you still have your coefficients. Sorry, that was the longest notes, too. <laughs> All right, and then finally, your net ionic is you take out your spectator ions. Okay, and um, you still have charges, states of matter, so I'll say S O M, states of matter charges in your coefficients, okay? So this is the main event one. So this is the one that you are actually going to be responsible for doing on your test, for sure. I might ask you for one of these, but for the most part, you gotta be ready to recognize your net ionics, okay? Um, so when I say they, they do the main event, if you have something where you're forming a precipitate, it's gonna look like a synthesis reaction. Okay, if you have something neutralizing, you're going to see the HOH forming water. Okay, so it's just little things like that. So your spectator ions are ions not involved in the reaction. Okay. Okay, we're all good here. Okay. All right, so let's real quick while we're here, just review your also your types of reactions and then we'll go over to the other side. All right, so synthesis. What does the synthesis look like in terms of like A plus B plus C and stuff like that? Good, A plus B yields AB. So you're forming something new. Decomposition. Right. Okay. Single replacement. Oh, okay. I'm going to put it like this. <laughs> Same thing. All right. So A plus B, C, and then A is going to kick out. first guy. Um, you can also have it where the second one is the one changing. Okay? So it just depends what you got. What is What are your single replacement ones based off of, by the way? Yep. So this is important for single replacements. So your activity series. Okay? So sometimes things aren't going to be able to bump out the other one. And that's the big idea. And then no reaction happens. All right. A double replacement is going to look like AB plus CD yields. You can't have AC. All right. So you have to change the same things. Yeah. AD plus BC. Okay. I would say biggest thing, biggest problem people had when you guys first learned about that pre-AP year was you tried to switch, like, yeah, what you guys said. You tried putting the AC together and the BD together. Can't do that. Okay. All right. All right. Combustion. So you would have um, some sort of a CH. <laughs> you have to put CH. That's your fuel. Okay. Yeah, I lied. You could have other things combust too. But we're going to put CH because it's usually a fuel. 
in oxygen and you're always making CO2 and some water. Good. And then you guys should have neutralization. You have a little sort of. All right, we'll, we'll do it really small. All right, this is going to be H plus plus OH minus yields H2O. And usually what ends up happening is you have a salt, okay? So put salt like lower, oops, because you're usually gonna have some sort of, um, <clears throat> of something that it's gonna be attached to, okay? So usually this will have your cation, this guy will be your anion, and you'll put them together to make a salt. So for, okay, so I see a blank stare. All right, we're good, all right. So if this was like, HNO3 plus NaOH, we would make that H2O plus, and we're going to combine these guys. So you have um, NaNO3. That's a salt. Is that better? Good. Cool. All right. All right. Um, nope. We got time for to do the first one on the other side. So look at the uh, right here. All right, so this, we are going to be making um, each type of equation, okay? So this is good practice. I, I do recommend that if you've already gotten through the online homework or whatever, or if you just want to practice it before you come to class tomorrow, I totally recommend it. But let's go ahead and look at this first one. So potassium chloride. We're going to write our charges on the words. So potassium has a charge of what? Plus one. Chlorine has a charge of? Minus. minus so we can put them together already. So KCl, okay, um, give yourself space for your state of matter, plus um, lead to nitrate. So what does that mean, lead's charges? Two. Plus two, nitrate has a? Nice. Good, good. All right. So that means we're going to put a little two on the outside. Okay. We're going to yield. All right, what type of reaction is this? This is a double replacement. Most of your double replacements are going to form a what? A precipitate. Good. Most of your single replacements are going to form a? Nope. Your single replacements, gas. gas. Yes, that's usually the one where you're putting, like, it went in pre-AP year, you took, like, a piece of magnesium, put it in hydrochloric acid, and then you had bubbles. And we're like, woo. Yeah, and then no more, no more magnesium. It's all gone. <laughs> okay, so, all right. Um, so for this, so now they're going to switch partners. So we're going to have potassium nitrate plus PbCl2. Am I still on the screen? No, not really. There we go. All right, PbCl2. All right, so now let's look at our states of matter. If I just told you that you're most likely, oh, actually, look at your you look at your products first. This one, what's he gonna be? Aqueous or solid? Aqueous. Yep. How did you guys do that? What did you What were you looking at? The nitrate. So your solubility rules. That's what you do. You analyze your solubility rules. Okay, let's put your solubility rule of mind on. PbCl2, solid or aqueous? It's, all solid. it's a solid because of PMS group 17. Okay, so that's your precipitate right there. Okay, now in a precipitate reaction, what are you usually putting into it? Is it two liquids or aqueous solutions or do you put like a salt into it and then you have like a magical salt? Uh, you put two aqueous things together. So these guys are aqueous at the beginning. Magical salt. That would be really cool. <laughs> well you kind of are making, I mean, all right. Um, and then last thing on this one for molecular, what do we have to do also? Balance. balance it. All right, so looking here, it's an easy balance. So we need two nitrates. Now we just have, now we need two Ks. We already have two Cls, and we're done. Okay, two, one, two, one. And that's it, okay? So that we will continue on tomorrow. We'll bring it down.
to the ionic and the net ionic. Okay?